What's up, space people? It's Spatula here. Glad to be back in 3305 after a drug-addled failure of my last mission. Well, time traveling to 1989. Okay, shit got weird. But I just got back to the bubble, just in time to be able to jump in and experience the latest, say it with me, community go- oh, uh, I mean, um, in initiative in a stellar- Look, I, I thought I'd try something different uh, a bit for this video and just to uh, maybe talk about my thoughts on this recent event called Bridging the Gap, which is the first example of the new version of Frontier's Evolved Community Goals, which are development-run events here to fill the void between now and 2020 Space Lags update. Come on, everyone knows about the leaks by now. And before I get into it, I'm no universe designer myself, but I'd like to think I've got a bit of experience in storytelling and in knowing what makes a game good, from a player perspective at least. So most of my thoughts will be around those elements. And I'd say this is kind of a review and kind of a critique, so if you happen to get offended easily, then look for the earmuffs icon in the corner to know when to plug your ears, crawl into a ball, and scream while rocking back and forth. Let's begin. Phase 1. Frontier announced that a megaship ferry would be set up, along with an outpost in the Guardian region of space, about 700 light years from the bubble, and a vote was held on the forum for players to choose which system the ferry and outpost would go to. So, it was a forum vote. Is the whole universe designed just to bring traffic to their forums? Ooh, maybe times are tight and they're having the SEO manager write the storyline. And the choice was between five nearby systems with snoofy blah de blah names that are all pretty much around each other. You know, why not do a Galnet special bulletin and push a comms message out into the inboxes of all ships? Announcing it so it, it comes from in-game, not from out-of-character community managers. You know, have it be more like the, the Ramtom missions or the Palin missions. The way they work, in-game, in-character, via your comms. That shit was cool, even when it was bugged, which it usually was. But the whole experience kicking off this way made it very hard for my... my... immersione. A trailer or an in-character video from Zenday Partners would have been a great way to announce the event. Not an unstructured hour-long livestream with nuggets of info peppered about, or even a four-minute video from a community manager explaining this for everyone, or a forum post, or that typical community goal wall of text. Anyway, the plot revolved around a company setting up shop to harvest Guardian artifacts and materials. Okay, it's interesting to see some plot lines advance for the Guardians, so at least at this point it seems like the story might be interesting later on. That said, who is Zende Partners? A transport company? So they just set up a megaship and, I guess, an outpost, but why do they even want Guardian technology? What is their motive? And, for that matter, who's Sengen Exchange? These are just some companies and have no characteristics. You might as well have called them Business One and Business Two. What if one of them had a better reward but questionable ethics? Or one specialized in weapons and the other one in science? If you wanted people to vote on something interesting, it would have been better to have just two systems in very different areas and make the choice more about the, the morals and the rewards that each company represents. Do I vote for the ferry going to the location I want, but the payout sucks? Or do I vote for the shady military organization, get a great payout, but I might be supporting the bad guys? The only positive thing I can really say about this phase is that it completely killed my hype for the rest of the event, allowing my standards to be reset back to the space between the floorboards of my apartment, where there's absolutely no one buried there. As for the conclusion of this phase, I ended up jumping out there from my python, overtaking the new ferry, because a ferry that only leaves once a week is just not ideal compared to a measly 24 jumps or so in my python. And this brings us to phase two, where Zende Partners decides they don't want Guardian materials after all, just commodities, and they'll hold the event at an outpost where you can't land your anacondas. But, if they get what they want, they'll add a technology broker so you can unlock Guardian tech. Tech that sometimes requires random commodities like microwave cooling hoses, which you can't buy at the prospect. Why is life so complicated? Now, at least there's some gameplay here, but it's kind of grindy, showing off some of the best handcrafted beautiful locations in the game with the Guardian sites. But having the two scoops of raisin at a time thing in your SRV turns that exciting experience into a back and forth repetitive fetch quest. Maybe introducing a new SRV with eight cargo slots but lower speeds would have been a neat hook for this kind of thing. Now, even with the limitations of working with what you have, assuming you can't go design some SRVs, 
You could have done something interesting here, like five simultaneous community goals to unlock various Guardian techs and skip the material grinds. You know, cash in your exploration, you get a free Guardian FSD booster in your module storage, go mining to unlock a free Guardian power plant, make sure those limpets have that juice, bounties for the multi-cannon, Guardian artifacts for the rockets, you get the point. But the rewards for these events should be massive, like, like Void Opal levels of payout. Not 600k, even for bottom tier. 26 million for the top 10, is that like, two Void Opals? The events need to be exciting, and what is more exciting than an injection of credits into the old rebuy fund? Give me the money! Story-wise, there wasn't really much to this phase, the obligatory grind for items quest, but at least the devs placed several different ways to get the commodities through signal sources and piracy, instead of just limiting the relic nests and the Guardian sites. That said, spending some time in the Guardian sites is pretty neat. Visually and in terms of background ambience, they're spooky as hell, and they make my Xenoarchaeologist fantasies come true. Plus, if you need to do the Guardian grind anyway, this was a convenient way to kill two birds with one stone. Only, I think I was happier with the material stockpile than I was for the reward for the CG. I mean, I, I, whatever. Phase 3. Where Business 2 decides to take over the ferry that no one cares about, provoking a war with Business 1. Now, this phase was probably the most fun for me, actually, because the combat zones, due to the recent improvements from last year, are great. The objectives in combat zones where you have to kill spec ops or war journalists really help spice up the action, and the combat zones actually having a definitive end makes them more satisfying. Anyway, this was a good phase overall for gameplay. That said, the story component really wasn't there. Again, it all roots back to Business 1 and Business 2. No one bothered to define these two corporate actors, so the entire conflict simply hinged around a weapon choice, neither of which looked very appealing due to a requirement for, you guessed it, Guardian Materials, to allow the weapons to synthesize Xeno ammo. The conflict wrapped up with Business 1 taking over the system and releasing the advanced multi-cannon. And that's... that's it. The plot of this event was basically, Business 1 makes a useless megaship to encourage Guardian Grind, Business 1 asks people to sell them Guardian Grind, Business 2 wants to grind, but gets rejected, Business 1 releases a new weapon, which is a critical flop and requires more grind. And now I guess the galaxy goes back to whatever it was doing before? What was the story here? What did we learn about the Guardians? About humanity? About either of these two new factions? About how the political elements of the galaxy responded to all of this Guardian mayhem? And what was the real player impact beyond a new multi-cannon? So while the gameplay of Phase 3 was alright, the story and conclusion is very anticlimactic. At the end of the day, we're left with the ferry and an outpost to the Guardian sites, uh, and a decal. So let's hope some lessons were learned from this last event. The next one won't be until July, but hey, that's cool. In the meantime, I can bridge my own gap by finishing up that Guardian grind and getting back to the bubble with a whole boatload of new toys to shoot things with. And of course, I'll be at LaveCon in early July, which should be uh, exciting. But fly, Dangus Commanders. See you next time.